ますよ。Okay, so good, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for sticking out so long. Uh, I realize it's the last talk of the day, so I'll try to keep uh, to be as gentle as possible, even though it's like a theoretical talk. So there will be some technicalities, but I will be as gentle as possible, and I invite you to, let's say, stop me and, let's say, uh, after the talk and ask me for any detail about this, because I don't want to hinder the take home message. And um, so, as Mauro said, what I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about is um, to present a, um, a framework uh, which will allow to, let's say, bridge together uh, the two main approaches nowadays that exist in the community of quantum thermodynamics, which are like what I, what I call a stochastic approach and what I call resource theory of thermal operations. Okay, so before starting, uh, let me spend a couple of minutes talking about where I spend most of my days working which is Trinity College Dublin. Um, this place is, a, is an amazing campus. And what you see here is the old library, the Book of Kells, which uh, it's just like one of the oldest library. And uh, here is the group where I work in, and which presently is, uh, consists of three PhD students, yep. and, and three postdocs, and one associate researcher here. And forget research, and the group is led by Professor John Gould. And the work I'm going to talk about uh, has been a collaboration between a few people. Um, there is Nelly uh, and Jens from the University of Berlin. Then there is Kavan from Monash University, Mauro Paternostro from Queen's, Queen's University of Belfast, and of course John. Um, so here's the outline of the of the talk I'm going to follow, and. Uh, so before starting with the, with the content of the actual talk, um, let me give you a minimum of context for those of you who are not familiar with this, with this issue. And this also what it was that what motivated us in the first place to study into this, this problem. So as many of you may know, nowadays a big portion of quantum thermodynamic uh, scientific community is, uh, so to say, split in half. And the main argument of dispute uh, um, is whether, I mean, which is the approach, like the most fundamental approach and useful approach to quantum thermodynamics, which is thermodynamics of quantum systems. And uh, mainly, like, um, on one hand, we have that um, out of, like, fluctuation relation uh, have been derived to characterize, let's say, the, the response of um, uh, out of equilibrium arbitrary system, both classical and quantums, and have been, and they can be seen as refinement of the second law of thermodynamics to the nanoscale. And they've been extremely successful in characterizing, let's say, a lot of uh, a plethora of phenomena. On the other hand, uh, there is another approach, more mathematically oriented and very solid, which is, called, uh, which is based on resource theory of thermal operations. And uh, there have been very a lot of benchmark results in, in, this, in this framework as well. But, um, and, but let's say, uh, usually, the two results are not phrased in a comparable manner manner and and therefore let's say there have been uh, uh, quite a, some dispute in the community on which one uh, I mean uh, what's the comparison or which comparison can be drawn between the two of them what I'm going to present is a formalism actually that um, kind of re allows to reconcile them in, in, a, in a quantitative way so let me start by systematically spend a few words on both of them um, giving a sort of crash course on both uh, what I call stochastic approach to thermodynamics and some something about resource theory of, of thermal operation of thermodynamics. So, um, as previously mentioned, um, uh, there are there have been two milestones results when it comes to uh, out of equilibrium uh, systems and when work has really is is considered a, a, a stochastic variable, and these two uh, these two results are. Uh, due to these two gentlemen here, uh, Jarzinski and Crookes, and the relation here uh, are, are, are shown here. And basically, they essentially state that the work done along any trajectory 
which brings an initial system uh, in thermal equilibrium out of equilibrium according to some word protocol lambda, uh, must fulfill these two very, very general conditions. And in particular, what Crookes relation says is that, that the ratio between the probability of, um, of work along a some trajectory lambda and the probability of the reverse of, uh, of producing the, the, the opposite amount of work along that reverse trajectory uh, has uh, an exponential weight which uh, whose exponent is the entropy production rate uh, the entropy production sorry and instead what Jarzyski says is uh, is another remarkable uh, relation which can be seen as the integrated version of the Crookes relation um, which basically says that no matter how I drive the system out of equilibrium, the, the system initially in, in thermal equilibrium out of equilibrium, the average exponentiated work will depend only on the initial and final state, will be a state function, which will be e to minus delta f, delta f being the free energy difference between the initial thermal state and the final reference thermal state. Um, so uh, as uh, many of you know, uh, and also was the topic of some of the talks here at this beautiful meeting. Um, the work in, in the quantum realm is, uh, is not an observable. And so uh, what you, uh, I mean, there can be many ways of defining work, but what is customarily done is to define it to in the stochastic approach, what I call stochastic approach, by, by means of a two-point measurement protocol, as Eric also was mentioning before. Let me just... Um, refresh some some of the basic idea behind it uh, so let's let's start with your with our system here initially prepared in a Gibbs state I don't think the laser works anyway but like and imagine to measure initially uh, to do a projective measurement on the end of the energy of the system and let's imagine that uh, we record an outcome EI at time e t, t equal to zero then we drive the system out of equilibrium according to some work protocol lambda until uh, a certain value of time tau, at which point we again perform the same measurement of energy, okay? And this time obtaining another outcome for the energy, which we call EF, assume it's, it's called EF. Then work is defined as difference between these two energy outcomes, and upon repetition of uh, uh, over many runs of this experiment, this, this uh, variable W, uh, which is work, becomes a random, a classical random variable, Okay, which will vary every run of the of the experiment, and um, so um, this 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 uh, this random variable will therefore be distributed along uh, according to some probability distribution P W, okay, which is given here, uh, where this object is the usual joint probability distribution of having obtained the outcome E I at um, at initial time and E F at the final time, and. Um, Provided the knowledge of this probability distribution, uh, one can, in principle, obtain uh, all the cumulants, all the moments of work, uh, as uh, of work distribution. Okay, but how? Uh, but mm, let's say in the same way as it's usually done, it's customarily done in, in classical stochastic uh, uh, theory. I mean, uh, the, the the most convenient way to actually obtain the latter, so the cumulants of work distribution, is actually through the um, the cumulant generating function. Okay, which is defined as the logarithm of the Fourier transform or of the Laplace transform equivalent of the probability distribution. Okay, and therefore, like given this cumulant generating function, one can obtain all the cumulants of work distribution simply by derivation over this parameter eta. Okay, which is uh, commonly known as counting field parameter in the community. A lot can be said at the level of the cumulant generating function. Uh, I will not, let's say, go into this direction because it's not the focus of this talk, but I suggest like uh, you go read uh, the uh, one beautiful review, uh, the one of 2000, the review of Mother Physics by Esposito and others of 2009 uh, of on full counting statistics. And um, so actually what one can prove uh, is that the cumulant generating function in the case of a closed system as shown before uh, the first result is that one can actually prove that uh, can re-express the cumulant generating function of the work distribution in this form, where this quantity here is the alpha Rani divergence, okay, between the target, the final state rho s of tau and the Gibbs state relative to the final Hamiltonian, minus this, which is uh, proportional with the counting field to the to the free energy difference, okay. 
And uh, the, this quantity, as I said, was, uh, is the alpha Reni divergence. I will, not, um, I will save some time by exploiting the fact that it was already introduced yesterday in very detail. And um, the point is that um, one can use that, uh, that expression, that inequality, to derive to write down explicitly the first and the second cumulants of work distribution, namely the, in the average and the variance, and express it in terms of the first one, respectively of uh, of a relative entropy minus delta f, and the second one in terms of this quantity, which is the relative entropy variance. This quantity was first introduced by Thomas Michael and Hayashi in this paper, and then later on used many many times, especially in the res resource theory community. And uh, it's related somehow to some, some sort of um, heat capacity. And like this is, this is let's say, um, justified because if rho s of tau is another Gibbs state relative to a different beta, another temp inverse temperature beta, this is actually proportional to the heat capacity of the system. Okay, so let's now move on to the other approach, which is the resource theory of thermodynamics. Of course, due to the lack of time, I'm already running, let's say, low on time. But like, I, I will not uh, pretend to, let's say, cover uh, not nearly enough about the presentation of, of resource theories. But let me say very few things which will be, let's say, necessary for our talk. So um, the resource theory are like a, a mathematical framework which, given a set of rules of the game, a uh, set of assumptions, allow to define a set of free states, okay, which is a subset of all possible states. And according to which, let's say, the, all the states which do not belong to this subset are, are considered resources according to that theory, okay? And along with them, they come free operation, which are, let's say, endomorphisms of this set of free states. And resource theories, like depending on the set of assumptions one considers and free states and free operation, have been successfully applied uh, historically first to entanglement theory by Vlad Kovetral and Martin Plenio, to the uh, resource theory of coherences and recently to the resource theory of thermal operation, which will be the focus of our talk. So what we will consider in particular will be the following setup, okay, which is also, let's say, taking into account this PRX paper, beautiful one, and it's the following. So we have our system of interest here, uh, coupled with a battery, okay, which also was introduced today uh, by short, I think, okay, yeah. And um, and also, which will be like a con considered to be coherence-free. Okay, so it will not be an entropy sink, but just an energy sink. And then also, there's an environment. And finally, there's a switch. The switch is necessary because, as we will see in a second, uh, we want to perf with to include a change in the melatonin of the system because we want to talk about work. Okay, and and therefore, like in order to uh, comply with the set, uh, the following set of of assumption. In particular, with the total energy, pres total energy preservation, we need to include the switch in order to model a time-dependent Hamiltonian into a time-independent one, okay, with energy conservation. So, as I was about to show, so the assumptions of the game are the following: so we we require a unitary dynamics of the overall system. Then we also require that the total energy is preserved at the level of micro microscopic level. Then we also need that, uh, we, we require that the battery is invariant under displacement. And finally, we, we require that the switch actually performs the desired change in the system Hamiltonian, okay? So at least regionally, uh, um, but then as it was refined, but regionally, like in the resource theory, work is, uh, w was, was defined in a, in a very, let's say, different uh, way with respect to the to, what, to, to how Crookes and Jarzyski defined it. In the sense that it was uh, uh, defined in terms of um, the energy content of the resources, in this case the battery, okay, needed for in order to perform, to allow this transformation. Okay? So it's not, uh, it's a deterministic quantity okay, which allows this single shot transformation okay, from this initial state uh, with this ancillary state to the final one. Okay? So um, as in the, as for as Crookes and Jarzyski, uh, let's say, prove uh, represent the benchmark results in the case of stochastic theory, a uh, few s few benchmark benchmark results have been obtained also in the case of resource theory of thermal operations. In particular, um, the authors of this of this very famous paper and well cited paper um, derived a set of inequalities which represented um, a set of necessary and sufficient conditions 
such that the following as the following state transformation shown up there um, can be uh, is, uh, can be performed by means of thermal operations. In particular, if we allow for let's say uh, the use of a switch that changes the Hamiltonian, this reads this way, okay? Where um, basically this is a family of inequality which have to to hold true for any alpha, okay? And this F alpha is a sort of generalized free energy where which is defined in terms of the alpha rain divergence. Once again. So okay, now that I gave a sort of crash course of on both uh, both approaches, let's let's move on to the to the actual topic of this talk, to our contribution, which is let's say try to bridge the gap between the two definitions when it comes to work. So the setup we are we, we have in mind is so so the idea is the following, okay? Um, we want to apply the stochastic methods to a scenario where the resource theory are known to, to apply and then obtain results which hopefully can be compared okay, between the two. So the setup is the following. We have our system connected to the battery okay, uh, and, and there is the switch. We consider no, no bath in this case uh, because we actually wanted to cope with the uh, with case uh, Jarzinski and Krutz initially considered. So the bath is only used to prepare the initial system in, a, in an initial Gibbs state, and then is, is not, uh, let's say, included in the picture. And I, I want you to notice that the set of assumptions is also the same considered as I showed you before. And the idea is the following. So, uh, how, so the first thing is how, how do we define work? And the idea is to use uh, a stochastic way to define work so, but, but not at the level of the system, but define work using a two-point measurement protocol at the level of the battery instead, okay? So, um, so basically, uh, on the single run, on the single shot transformation, this is consistent with the deterministic work used in, in resource theory, but then over many runs of, of, of this experiment, this also uh, can allow the application of stochastic methods. So the question is, I mean, uh, wha what happens in this case? And the main result that we obtain, which serves as a parent equation for, let's say, the, the further comparison, is the following. So we remarkably prove, proved, we're, we're able to prove that also by applying the two-point measurement protocol and calculating the cumulative generating, fun generating function of work, defined uh, at the level of, uh, uh, of, the, of the battery instead, one can still uh, um, express the cumulative generating function in terms of an alpha rainy divergence here, okay? So very similarly to the case, to the closed system case, the only difference here be being that uh, now instead of rho s of tau, we have this tilde of rho s of tau, which is defined here. Okay, and I want you to notice that um, this differs only because the initial state of the system here has a factor gamma which weights it. Okay, and this gamma being exactly the argument of the alpha in divergence. So for eta going to zero, which is like the counting field disappearing, going to zero this actually uh, is equivalent to rho s of tau. And so, I mean, the first connection actually that can be derived between, let's say, the first comparison between the two approaches, uh, it's the most intuitive one, one actually is led to, is basically to, to start from this equation and, and see whether like the two uh, definitions of work actually can be compared at which, at which level one can uh, draw this comparison forward to. So basically, the first thing is that uh, by using um, an inequality, general inequality called Hölder inequality, one can prove that the cumulant generating function that we defined is always a convex function of eta, okay? And this fact can be also equivalently rephrased in this, in this form, shown up there, uh, for let's say non-negative values of eta. And by recognizing that the term of the right hand side is equal to minus the work, one can come, one immediately comes to, a fam to define, uh, to obtain a family of lower bounds, okay, for the mean display, for the, for, for the mean work, uh, okay, the final level of the battery, I, I stress. And uh, which can be equivalently re uh, rewritten, okay, using, using this uh, in terms uh, of this uh, mean irreversible entropy, okay, which is the entropy production. And this can be, can be, let's say, directly compared with the with the second law, the, the 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 set of inequalities derived in by by Brandau and the others that they called second laws of thermodynamics, which in this case and under the same assumptions can be simplified to this expression here. 
and where this has been rewritten in terms of this, uh, let's say, deterministic um, entropy production. Okay, and one can immediately notice a sort of similarity at this level. Okay, but also uh, 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 an interesting difference uh, difference between these two results. Okay, in particular for negative values of the counting field eta, this inequality actually becomes a, an upper bound uh, to to the work. So it greatly differs from the second laws of thermodynamics, as well for alpha greater than one, which because this holds true for any values of alpha, while this for alpha for for let's say uh, eta greater than beta, which corresponds to alpha equal to, uh, greater than one, then it becomes trivial because this quantity is always positive, so it's bounded from zero. So I mean, this difference that uh, the the direct application, the naive application of this formalism lead to actually still reflect some intrinsic difference between uh, between these two approaches at this level of, the, of definition of work, which basically um, is the, uh, I mean, keeps, uh, puts the root in the fact that basically on, on one hand we have like a stochastic quantity, okay, and on the other hand we have a deterministic quantity. So how to further, let's say, move forward uh, the, the comparison between these two approaches is actually to reach a middle ground, okay? And the middle ground is also has al also been studied widely in the literature of, of resource theory, and is the case of n uh, large but finite k n, n copies number of, of, of copies of of the system. So so instead of going to the limit n equal to infinity, actually we we fixed uh, n and uh, we characterize the accumulated work, okay, over n repetitions. And this has to be compared with the so-called uh, work of formation, which is the work necessary to, to, to do this uh, transformation, okay, between uh, which basically allows to uh, start from the Gibbs state on the system times the initial state of the battery over n uh, copies of the, of, the, of, the, of the system, and then bring it to the target state. Okay, so um, if we apply on one hand the stochastic uh, methods, one actually uh, starts by, by, by applying the, the, the simple, Chebyshev, uh, simple Chebyshev bound, which basically gives the probability, uh, the probability distribution that the accumulated work falls outside k times the standard deviation to the mean values. Okay, this for this holds for any positive constant. Okay, and uh, using this uh, in particular, what, what what one can define is actually the so-called absolute deterministic work in this case, uh, which is the quantity okay, that basically uh, bounds from above the accumulated work over n repetitions. And you can see by, by comparison with the Chebyshev bound that this quantity which I defined here okay, is nothing else but this. Okay? And now the idea is that we can, we can use our main result I showed you before, this equivalence between the cumulant generating function of the battery and this alpha any divergence to express both the mean value and the variance in this case in terms of these two quantities. Okay, where I also use the fact that these quantities are additive under under tensor product. Okay, so if I substitute these two quantities in the expression of what I define to be the epsilon deterministic work, and I set epsilon to be equal to k to the minus two in the Chebyshev bound. I arrive to the following expression for the, this quantity, okay? And why this is important? Because actually uh, what uh, Chubb and co-workers proved in this very uh, nice paper and also in other papers in using purely resource theoretical arguments, very solid mathematically, uh, is that the work of formation, which I remind you was uh, the, the work needed to perform these uh, this, this transformation actually has the same distribution, okay? Despite being derived in a completely different way, okay? While I remind you, I stress that the method we used is actually to use the same setup, use the two-point measurement at the level of the battery, and uh, calculate the cumulant generating function, and uh, use that re-expression in terms of an alpha Rayleigh divergence to arrive at this result, okay? There are still few quantitative, let's say, small uh, deviations between the two approaches, but let's say that, that's, that's like a good, good agreement. So in conclusion, so uh, the take home message is the following. In order to define the work, okay, we apply the two-point measurement protocol, the stochastic method, to measure the energy of an ancillary battery. Okay? 
in a setup which belongs to resource theory of, ther of thermal operations. And we obtain a relation between the cumulant generating function of work in this scenario and an alpha Raini divergence, exploiting which we show that what I define to be the absolute deterministic work in an n copy scenario is in agreement with analogous quantity uh, calculated in a totally different way using resource theories. And this allows us to conclude that the two approaches, despite look, looking very, very different to each other, are actually complementary to each other and not mutually exclusive. Thank you all for your attention. Giacomo, any question? So how should one physically understand the meaning of the new state, Rotilde, that, that you introduce? 